Can you take us through the process of developing a screenplay and help us understand what it means and maybe provide some examples? Sure. Uh, how fun. Uh, I'll, I'll talk you through um, the process that I really love. So it starts with the writer and falling in love with the writer's work. And so for me, that typically comes from I've read a sample or several samples of a writer inviting them into a meet and greet or a, a general meeting and just getting to know them a little bit and then sharing the, the things that are important to me, to us. Um, Kay and I are no longer um, developing or producing material um, that's not specifically for, for Kay to write or direct. Um, but uh, so I'm talking about sort of like earlier uh, in, in, our, in our company and so, uh, and then, so for example, I might say, oh, I'm looking for um, a project that um, uh, has uh, a lot of heart and hard comedy, contemporary, high concept, um, ideally um, involving like a two-hander. Uh, or it might be like, oh, looking for a road trip movie oh, or looking for something that's set on a college campus. So there might be some markers. And then, so I meet with a bunch of writers, you know, putting out like the general mandate and then they might come back and say, oh my gosh, I have this idea or, oh, I wrote this script. Would you like to read it? And so either hearing the pitch or reading the script, uh, and then falling in love with it. And, and then depending on where it's at um, developmentally, there may be developmental work that happens. And so um, for me personally, when I read material analytically, I read it once, I don't take any notes, and then I'll read it a second time. And then I'll, that'll be my like deep analytical read where I'm like, I'm stopping, I'm taking notes, I'm writing in the margins. And then, uh, and then I'll put a notes document together and then I'll read it a third time and be like, do I actually like that thought? Was that a good thought? Um, and then I always love collaboration. And so um, I'll talk to my colleagues and say, here are my thoughts. Do they make sense? What are your thoughts? And then we might have like put, any, uh, put um, more thoughts together on paper. I'm a big believer in putting thoughts on paper versus just speaking off the cuff. Um, as a writer, it's like you've worked so hard on either this pitch document or on the screenplay and it's sacred and I really want to be very very respectful. There's a feedback model that was developed by a former student of mine at Northwestern University. Her name is Allison Tatum and I have been using this feedback model and I think it's amazing. So it's a three question feedback model. What type of feedback would you like? How would you like to receive that feedback? Do I have permission to give you that feedback? So as a writer you might say Give me everything. I want to know it all. But then there are some writers who are like, can we just focus on dialogue in this pass? Or I'm not certain that the act bakes are very are strong enough. Or I'm really struggling with this particular character's emotional trajectory. And so we design together what is the feedback. Now I still have my comprehensive thought document, but I also really want to honor the process of the writer. And so really asking about how do they want to receive feedback and what type of feedback and getting that permission is really, really critical and important because I think writers have really been abused in so many ways. It's like, here's a piece of material and like everybody gets to have an opinion. No way. Not everybody gets to have like share their opinion with the writer. So we may go in back and forth a couple of times in terms of further developing the material. And then when we think it's ready, then we make a determination of, do we want to go directly to financiers or distributors or do we want to attach additional elements like a director or and or actors? So that's typically will involve representation to help determine what's going on in the marketplace, what's going to make the biggest splash, and then we take that that step. Yeah, I love that feedback model because then too you're going to get such a different response from someone if you know this is how they work. Just how some people are auditory learners, some people are visual, and so if you hit them in the right way, then they're not going to be as defensive maybe. Also. Yeah, because it's all about trust building and it's so tender and so sensitive to create something and then put it out into the world. And going back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of having a tough skin, there's an expectation that 
artists are supposed to have this tough skin. It's like, this is just the business. You're going to get a lot of feedback. You know, you just have to take it in. And it's like, and I'm like, no, create healthy boundaries. Receive feedback from the people that you respect and trust that have your best interests at heart. Don't open yourself up because you're looking for external validation. It's like, be extremely discerning about who you gift your work to. And unfortunately, that latter part will come if the work's out in the world. Yes. Then there will be no no feedback form and, and it will be delivered in various ways. Yeah. And I'm a big, it's like, never read the comments. No? Yeah. <laughs> you don't think that at some point, and I know that it can be painful, but at some point it, it's good to know how others perceive it or decipher, is this just a troll or is this somebody that actually has a point? Um, I have two thoughts on that. One is if comments are going to be anonymous that I'm like disregard them because it's it's this blanket permission slip for people to like just spew venom and when I when I'm reading the comments for someone else's work and I look at them and I'm going to say something that's probably an overgeneralization but and you can tell I'm getting sort of heated about this where it's like these people are not informed they actually don't know what they're commenting about. They may not know the genre, they may not understand the circumstances, and it is coming from a place of like brokenness as opposed to being discerning and, and actually offering an informed critique. So I'm like, forget it, don't read, don't, don't, you as a creator do not read the comments. If you really feel like there's gonna be value in having a general sense of what the feedback is, Ask someone that you trust to read the comments and then give you a summary that's actually constructive and helpful. But otherwise, you're just opening yourself up to, like, again, venom that energetically can be really destructive to who you are as a creator. Sure, and we don't know someone's agenda in the, the comment. It reminds me of the 90s talk shows mm -hmm. where you'd have the people up there and, you know, talking about whatever, and then you'd have the raise their hand and stand up and you knew just venom was coming yes. <laughs> and you didn't know what their agenda was. Who knows if they were a plant in the audience, but it would just be the peanut gallery throwing tomatoes yeah, at someone. Yeah, exactly. And, and you made a, a point earlier about like the way like different people learn and different people, you know, like communicate in different ways. It's all unique. So just like in terms of um, the people who comment come from a particular, like, those are people who like to comment. But there are a lot of other people who have thoughts and opinions but aren't commenting. And so how are their reflections being you know, heard? They're not. And so you're getting a skewed perspective by reading comments just from the people who like to comment. What does it mean to have a first look production deal? Oh, that means that um, a financier is going to give you X amount of money so that every idea that you come up with during the term of that agreement, agreement, you will bring that idea to the financier and I get to say yay or nay. Do you pitch ideas first or only completed scripts when you have a first look deal? Um, it depends on who has the first look deal. So as a producer, um, uh, my partner Kay Cannon and I had a first look deal at Sony, and so we would um, we would do both. We would uh, pitch like ideas of like, oh, here's an arena that we're really interested in, um, or a piece of IP that we are really interested in, or it's like we were submitted a script that we fell in love with, and then we we'd submit the completed script. As um, as a, I'm trying to think, like writers don't really have first look deals, they're going to be more in overall deals. But like as a director, a director might have a first look deal. So they're also similar to producers um, pitching nuggets or something that's complete. In your case, would Sony pay you up front? Yes. So typically with a first look deal, um, the, the studio will make an agreement, a one year, two year, you don't really see a three year agreement. And, and then they, they're part of the negotiation is how they'll, it'll be paid out. It could be paid out monthly or, or otherwise um, over the term of, of the agreement. Is there a minimum number of ideas you need to bring to them during that contract time span? Um, that can be stipulated. Um, it's for our deal, 
that a number of ideas wasn't stipulated, but there's an expectation as producers that you're going to be prolific. And so you want to be bringing in a number of projects. Now on the flip side, there are some studios that have first look deals where they're actually like limit the number of projects that a producer has. So, uh, which I know is like some of my producer friends, it's been like really frustrating for them where it's like, oh my gosh, like we really love this, but the studio says we already have three things in the pipeline. And then we want us just, just to focus on those three things before we put more stuff on our development slate. And so, uh, again, it just sort of depends on the studio and what their mandate is.